I, I'm Terry David Mulligan, Mulligan Stew, CKUA Radio, and the Mulligan Stew Podcast. I finally, finally tracked down Robert Finley. <laughs> but I had to wait for him to come to the Edmonton Folk Festival to find you. Hello, Mark. Um, so good to see you sitting across a table from me and not on YouTube or on a phone or something. Um, you lost your, I, I, you know I have to touch on this base to get to the music, but this is how it works. In 2014, if I've got it correctly, you lost your sight to glaucoma, most of your sight. And as you said that time, I'm not going to have a pity party, I'm going to get at it. Uh, a year later, you invited yourself to the King Biscuit uh, Festival in St. Helena, Arkansas. And you got into a jam, you, you were you been literally discovered by the Music Maker Foundation, and they came to see you busking in the street. Uh, a year later, when you lost your sight, what happened to you to make you want to go and jam well, a year later? I, a friend of mine uh, used to let me play at his club. He had a crawfish place, and they were paying the bills, you know. And But uh, I was like, when, the, when there's no crawfish, there's no business. So, like, what am I supposed to do? between crawfish seasons and so he was like well why don't you come go with me to the king business festival say they'll like you down there <laughs> so i didn't have anything else to do so he says uh later if you want to go be at my cafe four o'clock in the morning we pulling out and so when they got there i was sitting in the parking lot <laughs> and so uh, i parked my van and and, and put my suitcase in the RV with the workers and uh, got in the truck with uh, with Tom and uh, and he had a driver driving him so me and him and the driver we we drove to hell in the, and when I got there I, I helped them set up their tent with a little bit of help I was and, and then I once they did that I just started to walk and look and watching other people set up and and, and when did you busk, inside or out? Outside. Outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, what happened was uh, his daughter, they had told me that I couldn't bus mm -hmm. without a busting permit. Sure. So, but the, uh, his daughter had saw, uh, heard some guys talking about a jam session. And I knew at a jam session anybody can, yes. can play. Yes, sit in. And so uh, when I went and uh, talked to the guy that was over the stage, talked to the stage manager, and uh, the guy told me, he said, if you find out who this guy is, he said, if you find him, he decides what goes on on the stage. And so when I went to him, I just told him, I said, hey man, I know you don't know me and I don't know nothing about you. I said, but I sure would like to rock this crowd. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, I like to perform. He said, well, what do you, what do, you do? I said, well, I play guitar and sing. Mm -hmm. He said, you got a band? I said, I said, not with me. I said, no. So he was like, well, you think so many guys would play with you? And I was like, I'd rather they didn't. And he said, why? I said, because I got my own style of music. I said, I, if I mess up this opportunity, I said, I want it to be my fault and not because someone playing something that that it's not in the song. I said, I don't want them to have to learn it on stage. And so he says, well, you, I said, he said, well, I said, if you give me a chance, I said, I'll, I think I'll do all right. He you said, well, it. And so he says, uh, you know what? He says, you got a lot of guys to come up. So we, nobody never did this before. He says, so I'm gonna tell you like this. He said, this is a tough crowd here. He said, so either you're gonna be discovered <laughs> or you're going to be the laughing stock of the, uh, of, the, of the festival. I said, well, I'll just take my chances. So when it, he said, well, when you come back, when you hear the music stop, then you come back. He said, we got some things to go over, but when you hear the music stop, say you come back. So when I heard the music stop, I just uh, went up on the stage and uh, I say, I'm here. <laughs> he said, well, you don't need your stuff. Just... I'm just going to plug your guitar in. And so he didn't know anything about me, so he says, well, you're Robert Finley, 
He says, and all I can do is tell the people who you are. Yeah. And so he gets on the mic and he says, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're getting ready to start our jam session, but uh, it starts in about 10 minutes. Say, we're gonna, this guy, Robert Finley, is gonna sing you a couple songs uh, while, we, uh, while we wait on the bands to get here. And so I started to do my, I had wrote a song Call I'm gonna buy me a bulldog and watch my house when I'm not at home. <laughs> Cause I, I didn't see nothing with my own eyes, but I did something funny going man, on. Yeah. Man. And so uh, the song kind of is a, you know, it's a it's a Delta blues, but it's a comedy too because it's the the lyrics of the song. If the if the voice don't get you, uh, the joke will, you know. And so I I took a chance on it. And, Did they uh, like it? Did they like it? Oh, they loved it. They loved it. When I first started singing, it wasn't anybody out there. It was just just a big open space because it wasn't time for the jam session to start. And so I started to singing, and people started to come in from around the corners and out of the woods, and everybody was coming to see who was it. And so when I, by the time I finished the song, I had a pretty good little crowd, and so he told me to sing another one. <laughs> so uh, he said, go ahead, sing another one. I think they like you. So I sung another one, and I really couldn't see them that well, but I, you know, the motions, I could tell the movement. And so uh, after about the third song, then I started hearing this loud applause. Nice. And so I was like, nice. So the guy was like, it was time for me to stop, but they didn't, <laughs> the crowd didn't want me to stop, so they was asking for an uncle. So he told them, he says, because in the beginning, nobody wanted to play with me because nobody knew anything about what me. What you so, were doing, yeah. But by the time I did those three songs, everybody wanted, all the musicians, I'll play with you, I'll play with you later, you can play with me later, you know. And so uh, he asked me would I come back later on in, in the middle of the festival and, and do a, a jam session with some of the guys. And uh, I told him I that's would. Where, and that's where they start, and that's where it all started mm -hmm. from that point there. My question is, that's a year after you lost a partial, uh, almost all sight. If you hadn't lost your sight, would you have been there? Uh, I was carpenter by trade. Uh, well, that's what I'm uh, saying. I, I was so, very so happy. you lost your sight, but what did you gain? Yeah, uh, I tell people at the end, it, it took took me losing my physical sight to really see what I really, uh, what my true calling were, you know, and so. Robert Finley on uh, Mulligan Stew, CKUA Radio. Um, Dan Auerbach came calling months later, months later, many months later. Did you have any idea who the Black Keys were? I had never heard of the Black Keys. Did your kids tell you? They, my daughter hadn't heard. But when I told her who it were, yeah. then she went, yeah. um, she you Googled Google? it uh, and found, she said, then she called and said, Daddy, you realize who you with? I, I said, some guy named Dan Arbach. She said, Daddy, that's the, that's the number one rock and roll band in the, in the country right now. I said, you need to give it your best shot. So uh, he said, you finna be a rock star. I say, yeah. I say, oh yeah, right. I've walked these stages and these grounds at Edmonton Folk Festival and other folk festivals, and I can see and tell that each of the artists on stage brings music not only about themselves, but about where they came from. You came from Louisiana. You are Louisiana. When you go out on stage here, what part of Louisiana goes with you? Oh, basically my childhood. Uh, yeah because I'm living my childhood dream and and I get to tell, you know, like 10 years ago, nobody gave the heck who I was or where I come from. Exactly. But now the whole world wants to know more and more about my upbringing and, and, and uh, my childhood. Uh, I think it took that, the hardship to really be appreciative uh, and I, I tell people now, people are like, why, why you wait so late in the game? Uh, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't even be doing it now 
if it uh, hadn't been for the blindness. So um, All right. it made me, I had, like I say, I had a little, a very short pity party uh, because <laughs> wasn't nobody feeling sorry for me but me. So I'm like, hey man, you know, like when you get sick or you first get sick, everybody is run to your rescue or to your bedside. Yeah. But if you don't hurry up and get well, you know what I'm saying, then they got to go on with their lives. And uh, so it's like either you're going to either you're going to get better or you're going to die. We can't just stay sitting by your bed One forever. Minute, you make a choice. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, either get, get up and go. <laughs> I've been playing Black by you, your album, your latest album. It had a wonderful groove to it, wonderful feel, and uh, it felt like you kind of did it live off the floor. It was, did it have that vibe? We, we actually made that song up in the studio so it was really just it, it, the, those the album wasn't written down who's leading you yeah and they follow you okay <laughs> that's the way it should work except maybe the bass <laughs> see, see the, the, the thing where they actually I didn't play the guitar on the album I let the musicians <laughs> got them a groove that they like and then I would come in and put the lyrics to the groove so I never did the um, no one sit down with a pencil and paper and wrote any song on the last album. It was all the spirit of the moment thing. The only thing we had to do was sometimes I mispronounce a word or maybe sometimes the, the bass player or the guitar player would be laughing <laughs> and then they would miss a note. So we had to go back and plug what we, uh, but it was really just fun. Were they laughing during alligator bait? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, okay. <laughs> definitely. And you had lived that, didn't you? Yeah, I I, I just made it up. I Six minutes long, you had lived it. Yeah. So with the alligator bait that you do tonight or today or whenever or you go, is it ad lived or is it? Uh, it it's it's the uh, original song. Okay. Uh, and then sometimes, sometimes uh, I change things because uh, mm. it, it's like a movie. No matter how good the movie is, and how much you liked it. Once you've seen it two or three times, you don't care to watch it anymore because you already know exactly what's going to happen. So even with my band, I never, they never know exactly what I'm going to do because I don't like to rehearse. I like to do the sound check and then do the show because I feel like the rehearsal is a waste of talent. Uh, and then I had friends that love to rehearse and then when time to do the show their voice is gone because they've hollered at rehearsal and gave all that talent then when time to actually do the show they've run out of they've run out of wind or they're starting to get hoarse and so even with the black keys when i toured with them i never did uh, uh, all i wanted to do was the sound check to where i can hear yeah the music in my monitor that I want to hear and exactly. hear myself. Exactly. And then, so maybe one song at sound check and, and I'm gone. Uh, and so after a while, Dan just like, you don't have to come out for sound check if you don't want to because we know what you're going to do, you know. So they got what they would just set my monitor for what I wanted. And I stay on the, on the tour bus un, until actually showtime. Because, and uh, I think another thing that helped me a lot is I try my best to stay humble and focused. And real. Yeah, and, 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 and that way, if you're humble, people don't have a problem approaching you. And if you f stay focused on what you're doing, see, like, uh, as long as I can take this hat off and put it back on my head the next morning. Yeah, yeah. Then my head didn't swell, swell. overnight, and then I'm, I don't get the big heads because some people get arrogant. Nobody can work with them. Nobody can talk with them because they they get beside themselves. I never, if I played with the band before or not, uh, everybody deserves a chance to be themselves. And all that, in my, you know, I had young musicians be like nervous and stuff. I'm like, hey man, we got one thing that's mandatory that you must do 
And I said, what's it? You gotta have fun. Yeah. So if you're having fun, it spreads. People around you will have fun. But if you're looking at each other nervous, I say, the audience picks up that. I say, if you make a mistake, smile. You know. They'll smile with you. Yeah, if you smile, they'll smile. <laughs> if, but if you frown, they'll frown. All right. So if I go to dancing, then the audience will dance. And so I, I realized that I had, it was pretty much, you have to take control of the stage. Other words, and you do. Yeah, because this is my hour or this is my 40 minutes or whatever. And I follow no rules I, because I can't let someone else tell me how to be me. Yeah. And so I don't, my manager doesn't bother me, my producer doesn't bother me. Day job is to get me there and I'm like, I just show up. Just get me there. Just get me there, don't tell me what to do. You used to do the James Brown. Do you still do the James Brown? I I do a little can bit. Can you do that? Oh yeah, I can. I, I, I used to do the James Brown, Real used to love to do it. Uh, <laughs> you wore out your shoes. Yeah, I got many, I, I got a fence in front of my house with uh, with boots on the top of the pole and uh, that's my way of saying I'm, I'm hanging up my boots. <laughs> <laughs> so then the neighbors come and you know everybody comes and they, they take pictures and video the boots and stuff but I'm like every time I wear the bottom out of a pair yeah. I uh, I just want to see you do the James Brown. That, <laughs> I just want to see it. I'd love to see that. Well I, I, I um, they don't allow me to do this to do the uh, split and stuff because uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you might not get up. Yeah, well, it, 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 <laughs> the 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 danger of uh, you know not when I go on stage, I'm limited to where I'm placed to a spot. Yeah, and I know how many steps I can go to the right. I know how far I can go to the left. I know how many steps I can take forward or backwards without hitting anything or, or bumping into anything. And that's, my daughter constantly, Nice. She, she's always managing to make, so when people see me dancing, they were like, <laughs> he's, gotta, he's gotta know where he's going, he's gotta. And then when you point at people and then they, they just assume you see them, but I really don't see, all I see is, is movements. When you go home, do you still drive to the store and back? Sir? Do you, do you still drive to the store and back? Uh, at home, but that's you know a, where you're going. Yeah, and oh. then, see, I have what you call tunnel vision, and I can see way down the road. I just can't see what's right there. Okay. And, and uh, But I'm the only person in that little town that owns limousines, <laughs> and so uh, when they see yeah. a limousine coming, they... Yeah. They, they just normally give me the yeah, roads, you know, they just, they politely pull over. <laughs> You're in Canada now, Robert. Um, does this feel any different? Uh, no, because the people speak perfect English and I can understand what they're saying and they can understand what I'm saying. So uh, I've been to Canada before. Uh, I did travel here with the uh, Music Maker Foundation. Yeah. Uh, I traveled over here a couple of times with the with the Black Keys and uh, Dan Arbach and the Black Keys. So I'm pretty well uh, known in Canada, uh, but I hadn't never did this particular. When I was coming before, I was doing clubs, and I think I did an arena with uh, with the Black Keys. But this is an adventure. You're on an adventure. I don't know where it ends. <laughs> I don't know how it ends. But you must be having the time of your life. Oh yeah, I, 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 um, I tell you, you know, I tell my daughter all the time, baby, uh, you're blessed. You get, you're, you're prick, practically on permanent vacation, and <laughs> you get to travel around the world, and then you get paid to do it. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to pay to go. You get paid to go. And I you sense. sing with your dad. Yeah, and. And uh, she sings on my last two albums. I know. And, uh, and your granddaughter. And my granddaughter, and granddaughter, yeah. Okay. One more thing, just about busking. 
and I'm doing a busking special. I'm fascinated by buskers. Buskers who work the street and somehow get discovered and, and have a career. How long did you busk? Oh, man. I <laughs> Well, in, in Helena, that was my first time doing it. I was just having fun. I really wasn't expecting to do it. But when I came off that stage from that jam session, the guy that was over the busting said if I wanted to bus, I could bus in front of his store. Did you like it? Oh, I loved it. I loved it because uh, I I was went from making no money to where in a day's time I would make seven, eight hundred dollars busing. And uh, people was was gathering around and gathering around and gathering, and they were tipping really good. And I remember a couple of times it was kind of the wind was high, and I had a coat on, yeah. and I had a backpack, a little backpack under the coat, because when the when the wind started blowing the money out of the tip bowl. <laughs> Then that's when I would take a bathroom break <laughs> and I'd go put all the money in my backpack and put it, put my coat back over it because uh, I didn't have no one with me that I could trust uh, with my money. My daughter wasn't traveling with me then, you know, I was traveling by myself. And uh, so there was no one else that I really could trust to handle the money. So I just had a little backpack and when I got to the hotel, there I counted. Is. Uh, yeah, and I counted out seven hundred dollars. I'm like, wow! I'm going back tomorrow. Wow! <laughs> so yeah, it uh, made you a better performer, though. It yeah, really it really did. Yeah. Uh, it made me pay more attention to what I was saying. In other words, I used to would just say anything for the laugh, but then in front of people, well, they want the story. They, 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 and then they they take you serious when you're just joking. And as a matter of fact, the alligator bait was really just a figment of my imagination. Uh, one of the uh, most requested songs uh, for encores and stuff, but they, it, it, it was just a figment of my imagination, the way I saw it. And I got to tell the story where there was, I didn't really think they was gonna put it on the album. I thought it was just gonna be something we laugh about in the studio. Yep. And uh, mm -hmm. everybody uh, had so much fun doing it. Then I wind up being the last song on the album. Here's the last question, Robert Finley, and this is that. I want you to talk to the, to the audience out there, especially young performers, performers who are, I, and I know I, I can see them, I can hear them, who want to get where you are, and they want to know how that works. Just give them 60 seconds of, of the, the first advice I would give to anyone, be yourself. Don't let nobody else put doubt or discourage you. You got to be yourself. Number one, a winner is the one that never quits. But remember the quitter would never win. So if you stay focused, and stay humble and treat everybody else like you like to be treated and the rest is pretty much history if you believe in yourself then you got to make a believer out of everyone else so it took me 63 years to even get a shot at this and so out of 63 years, I could say this, you're never too young to dream and you're never too old for your dream to come true. So hold on to your dream. That would be my advice. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Robert Finley.